Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review, another anniversary movie, movie review to be exact. Um, another film um, for not 20 years, but uh, 20 actually for a 25th anniversary movie review, uh, which reflects on the film, the films of 1992, which I already did one earlier at the beginning of this year. So, but this one, 1992 was... Um, some good films, I would say, but um, this one I would say it's it's another Disney film. It was the highest grossing film of 1992, and it's high time I give uh, the a proper 20, 20 uh, another proper well, I didn't, uh, a proper move 25 mo anniversary movie. That's what we're trying to say, and that is other than the the, the another Di another Disney classic, Aladdin. Another I will said another classic Disney film. Member mem memorable as well. I don't know what I can say about that, and I highly, I highly enjoy it. And this is a two disc uh, special edition that I have here. And what can I say about that? And it was just, it's a classic. And it's just me and my brother just watched, grew up, grew up watching all these classic Disney films. They they came out around these, around the around, especially from the nineties. You know, we got Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Hercules, Mulan. Tarzan, um, just so, so, just so, just so much, and just we're going to give more to it with another, with another classic Disney film like this. I mean, and it's just, and it's also it's directed by Ron Clements and John Musker, who directed The Little Mermaid. And Hercules, and then they just directed their latest one, Moana, which Moana was a huge hit, and they so they, they, they the same guys who directed Aladdin, same guy who directed Aladdin and Little Mermaid and, Her and Hercules, and the film was a huge hit. Um, just made over five, five barely making over five hundred million worldwide. It was a big hit, and it was a highest grossing film in 1992. And it's really, it's really well fast paced, and highly, and because of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, success, it spawned directed video films and animate and an animated series. And they want, they want to make a live and a, a they want to make a live action adaptation, you know, like how they are. What the new ones are doing, they think they were making one called Genies. I the guess maybe it's like a prequel to Aladdin. What about the genie? I guess from the Genie of the Lamp. Nah, not one. I'm not too sure on a prequel to Aladdin. I just why, why can't they just why can't they just make it just like a live action remake of this? I don't think it's like how what are they gonna do with what is uh, how are they gonna explain the story of the genie before he got into them before before Aladdin Aladdin finds him. I don't know. I just think they should have done this. If they could do that, I'm not sure on that though. I think Guy Ritchie was approached to uh, to direct it. Not too sure, but it's just. But it's, but it's also just this thing about based on this old t taking a tale from Aladdin and the Magic Lamp. You know, the thousand of, of uh, a thousand and one nights, whatever what it was called, made to a, a, such a masterful animated film that's still a classic to this day. Not dated at all, and highly enjoy the voice cast. Highly um, enjoy the songs, score, the animation, and this is this is everything is a, what's it, a memorable villain sequences. So the tale is so that the tale is, is you got this you got Aladdin who's what they always call a street rat, you know. In Arabia, and you got this, uh, this our villain Jafar with his pet bird Iago, and he, he Jafar he wants to get this lamp that's in the what was it, the the cave oh what was it the cave of the 
I guess just call it a cave. I think it was. It's like it had the face of a lion, whatever, a tiger. And, you know, you know, causing trouble in the streets and all that. And, you know, falls, you know, falls in love with the princess, uh, Jasmine. Father is uh, the sultan. And then one of them leads to, one that one leads to another that um, Jafar, you know, as a disguise as his old guy, tells about Aladdin about the this lamp that he has. And so he, one thing he agree he agrees to, and it goes down it goes down like dead as to how the way it is just from the inside of the cave, you know, filled with treasures, but. Of course, we get when he gets to the one room where he gets to where where the lamp is, and you know, the light showing. He picks it up. He says, "This is it." And he's also warned that he, did, he also was warned that did not you can't touch anything. You know, like his monkey Abu. He touches this one thing that catches his eyes, and he gets greedy and just wants, wants to take it. And um, let's just say Abu, no. And then <laughs> and everything's too late, and everything starts melting. All this. Escapes where like was all like like lava or like that, and it escapes when he gets the magic carpet to fly out of there. And it's like, Abu, this is no time to panic. Start panicking. <laughs> and then when when magic gets out to the exit, Ben, then it's like uh, uh, Jafar and this guy's like, give me the lamp. It's like, first give me the lamp. What are you doing? Giving you a reward, and it was what to stab him. But um, a uh, but Abu, um. <clears throat> managed to, to sneak the um, to get the lamp away from him and then before it's like no and then <laughs> but that's so he's, he's trapped all the way down at the bottom and of course when he gets the lamp rubs it and get the genie voiced by the late Robin Williams everyone ever and the one thing with the Latin everyone everyone will always remember uh, about the genie voiced by Robin Williams and he gets up and he's like, he sort ah, 10,000 years can get yourself a crick in the neck. Whoa! He you know, twists his head around. Oh, uh, I just uh, love Rob Williams. Dearly missed. Such fun as a genie. Um, and apparently it's like, because I'm like, uh, Reading up because uh, Robin Williams he ad libbed many of his lines. The script was turned down for best um, screenplay for uh, for as a, a Academy Award nomination. Why? Because he added some some of his own, a lot of his own lines. Or oh, it's because he didn't go by what the script was. Come on. But uh. Just, I mean, that's that's just dumb though. I mean, but you know, and just, but Ron Williams, I think it works because he. It seems like he had a little bit of lines, and just he was he was just a lot he was just a lot of fun as a voice of genius. Such a fun character, and just does all these things with his magic, and And then one later, one later, you know, he's in love. Tells that he's in love with this princess named Jasmine. He wants to make him a prince. I wish you to make me a prince, and by what she does. And then we get the thing is that um, where you get the, the song, you know, where you know, Prince Ali, you know, and he has all these things like makes uh, makes uh, Abu transform into this big elephant. Um. I mean, I of course, what do you, even though we, with the he's the rest of this of this prince, it doesn't seem to doesn't seem to um, impress uh, Jasmine at all. But um, but he's just getting the sense that he would better he doesn't want to tell like he, she's a street rat, you know, and just because wouldn't fall anyone would want to fall for someone like that, and. With uh, Jafar, which actually really um, speaking with Jafar is like uh, I think because of 
it says it was scheduled a conflict with Star Trek: The Next Generation. It was originally going to be voice, uh, Jafar was going to be voiced by Patrick Stewart, and he says in interviews that that was his biggest regret. I would like to see how would how um, I think would Patrick Stewart would have been a fine fit as um, if I think about it, I think it would have been a fine fit to play as a Jafar. You know, just how his voice would have played out. I would like to see that version of Jafar voiced by Patrick Stewart. But I think still think that um, uh, Jonathan Friedman as Jafar, I thought he still did a good, a good job voicing. Um, and just by all means, as 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 the story goes on, you know, as you know, we'll get one instance, you know, where finally, like, where, well, not finally, but. Uh, Get that memorable scene where you know, she, uh, Live Magic gets Chaz Jasmine onto like which he was going to he was going to jump off uh, the the building, but he's on the but he's on the magic gar magic carpet. He's just you know, hey, come come with me, you know, and that's where where you get there. They sing together a whole new world, a whole new world. But. One one thing leads to another is that um, Jafar manages to get the lamp, you know, and exposes that to Aladdin, who really is as a street rat, and then um, forget uh, turns uh, Jasmine's pet tiger. I forget what the tiger's name was into this little kitten. Um, so now that uh, Jaf uh, Jafar is the lamp, he has now control over Genie. And goes used to you know blow uh, Aladdin away, um, but she went first. See, first, um, his two wishes first that uh, Jafar uses. He wants to be the new Sultan, and and then he wants to be the brainwashed Jasmine to fall in love with him. But he says, but he can't. He cannot. He cannot. Uh, Unable to do that because I guess you can't make force someone to fall in love. It has to be like natural. So, and then another one where he tries to you know he tries to uh, distract um um he tries to distract uh, Jafar um but it does but it does, uh, but it doesn't work out with that if he goes he's on to him and then he um puts Jasmine in this um. Oh, uh, what those things are called? Uh, you know, with the with the sand in it, thing when you tilt it over, you know, ever since uh, amount of time before the last sand drops in, I forget what those things are called. Hourglass, that's what it is. An hourglass. And and then <laughs> and well, I wish I thought it was always kind of a creepy scene where where when Jafar transforms that huge snake. When when he gets that because um when Aladdin calls him a snake and he turns into this giant huge snake I was I was how the creepy imagery of that how the snake looks and and then he he, he then he then Aladdin gets a smart idea where he tells Jafar you like you'll never be as powerful as you know as uh, genies will, will still be more powerful than you and you won't never be as powerful so. Using his playing, using his like street smarts, I should say. So he tricks the genie. Uh, he tricks Jafar into telling the genie that he wants to be a genie. And now he he becomes a genie. He has his own lamp. So now he gets uh, sucked back into his own little lamp there, trapped in it. And he takes uh, Iago down with him. Um. And then they just, you know, then uh, G Genie uh, just takes that, um, you know, flings the lamp far away where it won't be found. And now the Genie is, um, well, Aladdin uses, once he uses the last wish, he wishes the Genie to be free now. And now that the Genie is free, he can free to be, go, to go wherever he wants. Um... And uh, then the shows, you know, the how you know that ends with uh, Aladdin and Jasmine, 
you know, now that you know they're in love with each other, you know, and this it ends with them singing a whole new world again. And they want they want they want to get married. And that's yeah, that's how the other movie. And then of course you when you get the seat when you totally get the the director the director video sequel, The Return of Jafar. But Aladdin, I I always I always enjoy. It. Maybe a shorter review though, but because I I I I I the ones I I would make films longer though. If ones I really do enjoy the most, like Beauty and the Beast and a lot out the Lion King, those some I still like more than Aladdin. But regardless though, I still enjoy Aladdin rock a lot. It's still a classic. It's still memorable. But I, I, maybe it's because most because I. Everyone knows the story. The ones I say, like, everyone knows the story about these old ones, though, but still. It's still nice to just, to just talk about, because some people are some people are still keen on, on forgetting these old, these classic films, and I just want to be a reminder, you know. But I still love Aladdin. It's still a classic, and just... it's People say, people say still it's one of the best Disney films. I would agree with that. But... The, the voice cast was the voice cast was still is still great. Uh, Scott uh, went went winner, which probably probably know that he played as Steve from uh, Full House, probably because he that's where probably most the, the only things two of the things he's known for from Full House in this film and and he still continues to voice uh, a lot in the sequels and the and in the, in the TV show. And even in the the uh, even the Kingdom Hearts video games, as Robin Williams, he didn't voice Genie in the, in the Return of the Jafar, but he did come back for um, uh, King of Thieves. And Robin Williams is just so fun, memorable as Genie. One, probably say people say is one of his favorite performances. I would agree with you that, and I just I miss Robin Williams. Um, John the Freeman as Jafar, a good villain. Linda Larkin as as Jasmine. You can hear my dog barking if you can hear. But um, Aladdin this has always been a classic, and it was it was critically acclaimed. Has like a, what about a ninety four percent of Rotten Tomatoes and an eight point zero on IMDb. Um, and 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 what, it was not. I think it won two Academy Awards for best music, um, best song, and best music. Probably for the song for a whole new world. I f I forget though, but. But the, the the soundtrack, the score, the songs, memorable, highly enjoyable. The animation still was pretty good from 1992. It was because it was released around a year after Beauty and the Beast. So, but the characters are memorable, villain is memorable. I would ever say everything about this film is memorable. I still I highly enjoy Aladdin. I think my brother he gets he has he likes this film just a little bit more than I do. Because he listens to the, he probably listens to the songs more than I do, but but regardless, I still I still like the film a lot. I highly enjoy it. It's still, it'll always be a classic. It'll still put in the, be in the classic ranks with all the other ones I mentioned: Between the Beast, the Little Mermaid, Tarzan, Mulan, The Lion King, especially Hercules. Um. There was also two, the other two I forgot to mention. There was also um, the Hunchback of the Hunchback of Notre Dame and uh, Pocahontas. Forgot to mention those though. But um, I the, those two I hardly ever watch. Those ones I never got, hardly ever got around to watch. I watched them a couple times, but I don't watch them as enough as as much as I did with all the other ones that I said. But I'll have to rewatch those again. I have to I have to give them. I would never I'll never say they're 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 terrible. I would never say that. So I remember seeing them back in the day, and I never thought they were terrible. I also so that they're still they're still good films, but I didn't watch them as enough. <coughs> I know, but I have to re give those re I have to rewatch those again. So, but regardless, so what more I can say about Aladdin? Love Ron Williams. Love the rest of the voice cast, the animation. It's, it's a whole new world. And...
this is just such an enjoyable film. Uh, so yeah, that's more and more I can say. So this is my uh, 20th, 25th anniversary movie review of Aladdin. I don't know more, more, how much more praise I can give it. It's 90 minutes, but it's very well fast paced. It's just done within the like within you know before you know it. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, I know there's there was like similar things like, or maybe I'm just keeping more. I just want to keep this thing going. Um. Uh, where is it? Uh... Yeah, this is Robin more. It's probably more with Robin Williams. Like this is a Robin Williams record. Uh, record most of the scenes between him uh, filming breaks on Hook and um, Toys. Yes, Toys is nineteen ninety two and Hook was ninety one. Um. Other other ones are for. Voice of Jafar was Tim Curry, Kelsey Grammer, John Hurd, Christopher Lloyd, Ian McKellen. Uh, well, usually Tim Curry is he does like voice does a lot of voice work though, but they probably want to get something else, some somebody else to do that. And Dan, so Danny, Danny Vito or Joe Pesci was going to voice um, Iago, but instead it was um, Gilbert um, Gottfried. You know? It's like, it's just it's with other friends mentioned, but you all guess that, that, that voice, like, what? And I thought that was nice that Iago got his moment at the end of Return of, the, Return of, Return of Jafar, where he killed his own master. <laughs> hey, Jafar, shut up! And he was also was also the same recurring uh, voice role as, as well as the show and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just I'm just I'm just dragging this on. I probably want to make this a bit longer though, but still, I just want to just make it keep going. So yeah, that's my review for Aladdin, my twentieth and twenty fifth anniversary movie review. If it was not seen this, I strongly suggest to check it out. But yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna keep on going on. Classic, memorable, and that's probably all I need to say. Childhood favorite, a childhood favorite growing up, and it's still in the ranks of those classic Disney anime films from the '90s. Always be remain memorable. So yeah, definitely two thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I gotta go stop her from barking wherever she's barking at outside. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned on the next movie review. Once again, thumbs up to this classic film as well. Later.